In printmaking, we can only print an image if it's graphic. And there are lots of ways to make images graphic. Uh, the process itself of screen printing or making a relief block will make it graphic. Um, but in order to do it in a way where we can really see what it's going to look like, in other words, make it predictable rather than the process making it happen and then the result is a surprise, um, is a little bit easier to do with um, uh, any image in Photoshop. So here I've got a collaged image. I've already flattened it. It's from multiple sources. Um, the first thing that we want to do, of course, for any image that we're going to make a plate out of, either for relief or scream or some other process, is get the physical size correct. So if we go to image, image size, this dialog box will show us the physical size, right? So this is 12 inches by almost 6 inches, and the resolution is about 250 pixels per inch. Uh, for this particular image, the resolution is probably okay anywhere between about 250 to about 400 is somewhere you want. I usually shoot for around 300, but this is fine. If I need to change the scale of the image, I've got to be aware that the resolution can change and will change, right? So if I have resample checked and I start to, let's say, make this 24 inches, you can see now it's twice its size, but it's still 250 pixels per inch. And if I do that, the image is going to be fuzzier, right? It's going to be less detailed. In fact, let's do that and we'll take a look. I don't know if we can tell based on this image or not. Um, I don't see anything that looks really obviously distorted. But if we compare that to what it looked like, perhaps we see a difference. I mean, here it is at 100%. If we redo image size here. Yeah, I don't think you can see it too much on this particular image. Um, but it, certainly if we made it three times its size, four times its size, the details are going to get softer and fuzzier and blurrier, right? Um, now if we make it smaller, that's less of an issue. In fact, that's kind of an old graphic arts technique is uh, to reduce something, you actually can make it sharper. Now with Photoshop, you got to be aware if you have resample checked and you change its size, right? Let's say we make this 36 inches large first and then we go back to image size and now we make this six inches All right say okay if we zoom in on that, that that doesn't look too bad if we compare it to um, the original we may lose some information there right so be aware, anytime you're resizing an image and you're resampling it, you are either asking Photoshop to add pixels where there aren't any, and that's where edges can get soft and fuzzy and you can lose detail, or you're throwing away pixels that you can never get back. Now we could certainly also uncheck resample so that now when I plug in 24 inches, you can see all three of these change, not only the proportionate height to the width, but also the resolution. Right? Um, and that can be handy for us to have more control about how much resolution we want. Right? Let's say I want um, a little less than 250. I want 200. I can click resample now, and now I can put in 200 pixels per inch. Right? And uh, I have a little greater control over how much I'm asking Photoshop to resample. I'll reset that. And we'll say our physical size is just fine right now. So we'll leave that as it is. And next, because this is a photographic thing, right, and it's made up of grays, here's our pixel information. Essentially, this image is made of 256 grays. We want every pixel to be either black or white. That would make it graphic, right? So how can we do that with a photographic image? Well, there's a number of ways to do this. Um, under adjustments, of course, if we go to threshold, that's kind of like the um, uh, 
the most simple way of doing this. You can see it makes it really harsh and really kind of coarse, right? But every pixel is either black or white. It also makes it in this particular uh, degree of resolution, 250 pixels per inch, kind of jagged and pixelated. So although that does work, it is by far uh, the most blunt instrument for doing that. Um, we can make adjustments to levels and curves, but we're still going to have a lot of grays there. We could use filters, right? Some filters will make them pretty high contrast, uh, make pretty high contrast images. But we have another way of doing that, and that is shifting the mode. So if I go to image mode, and you can't see the drop downs above up here, but on the, in the uh, drop downs in Photoshop, if I go to image at the very top, which is out of your view, I believe, and you see mode, right now it's grayscale. If it's not grayscale, I'd want to, and it's RGB or CMYK, I first want to make it grayscale. And then I want to move to bitmap. Now, bitmap essentially is making a file either black or white in terms of the pixels, right? So if I wanted first just to see pixels, right, black and white dots or black and white squares, the method I would use would be diffusion dither. Now, if we did 50% threshold, that's just like when we went to image adjustments threshold. Pattern dither will give us a pattern. Diffusion dither will give us a somewhat random looking dither. There are other ways to do that with other programs that we have specifically in the printmaking lab. Uh, Pixelator is one of them, and we have uh, in our version of Photoshop um, uh, some filters that will do that as well. But we're going to do it this way first. Um, now, with pixels, we are limited by the size of the pixel. In screen printing in particular, there's only so small of a dot that is possible to print. And in pixels, that is 100 pixels per inch. And I would say with our relief blocks, that's probably a good place to start as well. So if I say, OK, take all of these grays, make every gray either black or white, and make the pixels uh, uh, a lower resolution, 100 pixels per inch, that's our kind of our set standard size to start with. So once I say OK, now we can look at this image and look at all the detail that's still here. And it's made up of just dots or squares, pixels, that are black and white only, no grays. So this is now graphic, right? Keep in mind that the what we're seeing in the screen is also a simulation of um, what we would get if we were to print this out. If I undo this, and let's say I don't like some of the blacks down here still being uh, filled with a lot of white pixels. Maybe I need to adjust the contrast. So if I go up here, back to where we were, and this is the history panel that I'm doing, which allows me to kind of move back and forth, I can go to image adjustments and levels or curves and I can try and pump up the contrast. So let's say I want to make some of those darks darker there. Maybe I make the image a little darker overall, period. Say OK. Now if I go to image mode bitmap, 100 pixel per inch, diffusion dither, you can see we get a little more solid blacks in there. So it's doing it again based on the gray. So you can adjust the image in gray scale as much as you like to kind of get the results you want when you make it graphic. Okay, here are our kind of two different level adjustments. Right, here's what it looked like when I first opened it. It was a little gray overall, so I punched up the contrast a bit. Here, it's a bit more contrasty. I'm going to leave it there, and we're going to do another kind of adjustment, and that is making it a halftone screen. We'll do the same thing. We want to go to image mode bitmap. And this time we want to use halftone as our method. And our resolution now needs to change. Okay, what is going to happen is instead of getting small pixels, we're going to either get 
round circles, ovals, lines, or squares or crosses that, that are the shapes that make up the image. Now, if you think about, say, an 8-bit video game and characters or figures or environments that are made up are all pixelated and very jagged, right? That's because the resolution was really, really low. Uh, when we make the resolution really high, we get smoother edges. So let me do that first and then we can kind of compare. So I'm going to make this 800 pixels per inch for my resolution output. Okay, I'll say OK. And now we get an additional dialog box for the halftone screen. Now in the printmaking computer room, you'll see examples of what a 20 line per inch dot looks like. And you can compare that to a 30 line per inch or a five line per inch. The smaller the number, the larger the dot, the larger the number, the smaller the dot. And just like pixels in screen printing in particular, um, we are limited by the size of the dot. And the same is going to be true for relief and lithography and intaglio and the other processes, right? We're kind of limited relative to what the process can handle in terms of a mark that can accept ink and print ink. So in screen printing, we're around 30 lines per inch. That's our frequency. Okay. I'm going to leave this at 20 because they're a little more prominent and they'll be easier to see. The angle is the, the, the line at which the dots will be drawn. That'll make sense as I show this. I'm going to make this 45 degrees, which is kind of a standard angle for a single image. And then I'm going to make it a round dot shape. And when I say OK, you can see what happens. Right? It looks more like a commercially printed image image okay and you can see those dots as I zoom in on them we're looking at it about 200% so right here they look pretty smooth and if you look at the dots they are all in a line that is the angle so these are all going at 45 degrees right and we've made it a interesting graphic kind of image that has this really wonderful layer of abstraction when we get close to it. So the bigger the dots are, the more abstract the image is, and the less photographic it looks. The smaller the dots, the more photographic it looks. So the range from 30 to uh, 1, or whatever the smallest number is, is our range. And I'm going to undo that. And we're going to do it again, this time with a lower resolution. So if we go to bitmap, I'm going to leave this at 100 pixels per inch. I say OK, and we're doing the same thing. 20 lines per inch, 45 angle, round dot. Let's look at what those dots look like now. They look really pixelated. They're not round at all. So we need that higher resolution for the small pixels that make up each individual dot. So the dots then are smooth. Right? Unless, of course, we want this look, right? This gives us a bitmapped look with sharp graphic edges in rectangular 90 degree uh, turns. I'm going to do one other version here. If we go to image mode bitmap, I'm going to leave this at, again, 800 pixels per inch. We'll say OK. And uh, I'm going to make this 10. And I'm going to change it to a ellipse. So this is more of an oval than a circle. And you can see how big those ovals look like. And actually, I'll do this one more time. We'll change the angle. I'm going to go bitmap 800. This time we'll do lines. And I want them to go at, let's see, what zero degree. Or whoop, I want to make this uh, 20 lines per inch. Let's make this zero degrees. Let's see which direction the lines are going. Yeah, they're completely horizontal. So you can see these are straight lines. They get thinner or thicker, ebbing and flowing based on the photo information, the pixel information. So lots of possibilities. And uh, again, we have other 
uh, ways of doing this besides what I've just shown you. We've got other filters uh, called Andromeda filters, which echo um, uh, and try to replicate what rough relief blocks look like, what a, a mezzotint print looks like, what a, uh, a different type of halftone looks like. So there's a ton of possibilities there besides what I've just shown you. Um, and we also have a, a, a standalone application called Pixelator that can do the same thing. Uh, it makes these kind of um, uh, worm-eaten, uh, kind of serpentine marks to develop images. Now, once we've got our image graphic, last thing we need to do is save it. Before I do that, I want to go ahead and make this a RGB file, right? Um, here, if I'm just printing out a film for screen printing, I can just print this. But if I'm doing this for the laser or for the CNC router, I need to have it in RGB mode. So I need to walk it back up the chain from bitmap to grayscale. Say OK there. And then again, image mode from grayscale to RGB. There it is there, right? Regardless of what your purposes are, you should always save versions of the file so that you don't save over the original. So I want to do a file save as, and I'm gonna save this uh, just to the desktop. And this is my Half tone, half toin test. I can save it as a Photoshop document or as a JPEG. Either doesn't matter. I'll save it as a Photoshop document. Um, and that way you've always got the original to go back to, right? Always get in the habit of saving multiple versions of your files and labeling them appropriately so you understand what that file is for. And then now once this